All right, we are live. We're live on this Thursday, I'd say. Is it late afternoon or early evening? Early evening? Yeah, I think it's early evening. I think we're in that uh, area where we can call it early evening. Uh, we're also in early spring as well, if you want to talk seasons. Spring has sprung. Uh, we got Girth, Original Gansta, uh, Chad H, Viking Funeral, Travis Delton, Matamirai, LS. Boom. Michael Blackie's in the house. Ashley is in the house. Good to see everybody. Yes, yeah, so you better hit that like button because Ashley is going to be all over your guys' ass if you don't. Um, I was going to say, oh, I think it were what, six weeks from the draft? I mean, it's six weeks from today. I thought it was less than that. It's 35 days. Yeah, but it's got to be because there's a Thursday after this in March, and then there's four. I don't know. I looked it up today. Uh, wherever I looked, it said 35 days. I'm not hmm. saying that was right. I'm trying to think when the, when is the first? The first is on a Monday. Uh, yeah, maybe March. it's only three. It might only be maybe it's five weeks. It might only be three weeks into April. How many days till the? I think we did this like last show. We tried to figure it out. It says no. I was days. Thinking, so it's thirty-five it's five, days. Five weeks. Five weeks. Who cares how many weeks? It's thirty-five days. Because sometimes five weeks sounds less than thirty-five days. That's why. That's why. But we'll be here. Pre-game in, one bar is doing the whole freaking draft live. I'm in shit con- faced. I'm- Absolutely, but definitely uh the pre-game show, tailgate party, giving away a lot of shit uh during that. So definitely hop on for that. It's gonna be fantastic. Special guests, and maybe I'm not gonna confirm it or guarantee it, but maybe some nudity. I'm not gonna be naked, uh, but I will be on during the whole damn thing, having some special guests along the way. Uh it's gonna be fun. I can't wait for that. I'm, I'm by the t- by the time I'm done. With that first round, I probably will have given away a lot of things. A lot of things. Michael Blackie. Hello, Michael QB1 Blackie. Is going to be May. Let's go. Mm, mm. Michael Blackie. God, look at that hair. It's perfect. My special guest, Tom, Thomas. Uh, Thomas was off the grid, man. He he left us. <laughs> I think he was asked to leave. Old Thomas. Old Thomas. We'll uh, we'll wait a couple minutes here, but plenty of talk about we got a special guest coming on. Draft expert Joe DeLeon from uh, Hack City and the Believe Network. Can't wait to get his thoughts on the Vikings quarterbacks and where where uh, where the Vikings will go. I know he's not a big McCarthy guy. He is not a big McCarthy fan. That'll definitely be a hot topic. I'm curious if he's warmed up uh, to him at all. And um, we'll, we'll find out here shortly. I don't know how you can warm up to somebody for, I mean, like, like if this was like us, we warmed up to him because, you know, we're not draft gurus. We're not even close, but like Joe D I mean, he's, he's, it's not like all McCarthy was just like, hey, I'm going to look at this guy. I mean, he knew him. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Maybe he, he delved deeper. I don't know. Sometimes, you know, opinions can change. Opinions can change. What a wonderful world we live in. Ballsters in the house. I mailed out his Randall helmet. Really? Hey, and Voss's Jersey. Finally. Hmm. I don't like making two trips to the post office. It's very far away to get on my horse. Well, me and old Donna, they're real close after all those trophies I mailed out. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, all right. He's you know actually going to be on the pregame show. Oh, Donna. You know, she, she might be my co-host. You never know. 25 likes. Keep hitting that like button as you guys get your butts in here. Let's go. Original Gansta is still wondering about his clown portrait. Dude, it's going to come. Yeah, what it's, the hell? I, you know what? <laughs> How about this? I'll just draw you a dick and I'll put that no, in the mail. No, he needs the clown. And, uh, you know, it's uh, I need to bump it up my to-do list. Unfortunately, it's just not getting there. And I, I owe Davey. I you love should Davey. do one like in watercolor. It's been so long. Well, it's going to be good. I mean, he might not think it is. It'll be one of my best. All right, let's talk some effing Vikings, huh? Let's do it. Let's jump right into free agency. Hey, we got some new Vikings this week, just like we did last week. We got four New Minnesota Vikings this week. Can you believe it? Uh, and let's talk about those guys. Jonah Williams, the standout defensive end from the Los Angeles Rams. And we got Shaq Griffin, the cornerback from Houston, because we get everybody who's ever played in Houston. And then we got Jaheed Ward and Kamu Grigir Hill, the special teams ace. So of those guys that we got, these new faces, these new players on our Minnesota Vikings, which one is the most tantalizing? Um, Mark Johnson wants my A minus sign. That's actually the first comment on. It. I'm surprised. <laughs> Are we going to talk about these did guys? You, did you keep it? No. 
God. We've talked about. We can go through them quick. We've already, you know, I feel like we've already hit them up very much throughout the week. But yeah, let's jump into them. Just quick. I mean, the the every one of them is like sometimes at this point in the in the free agency, it's like you you sign some guys. Like you know what? Maybe he makes a fifty three. Maybe he doesn't. I think all these guys make the team. Like these are all contributors. They're all depth pieces. Some mm-hmm. of these guys fighting for potentially a, a starting spot. Even I mean, Grigier. Hill, he's better than Troy Dye on special teams. He's better than Troy Dye as a linebacker. Upgrade. He's our number one backup. Uh, Ward, fantastic. Nice little depth piece there as well. And then Shaq Griffin, he'll de- he'll definitely be – he could be starting. Mm-hmm. They throw Byron Murphy or uh, Blackman into the into the slot. So I'm happy to see Mark Johnson is using our, uh, our unit of measurement, a pube. A pube of upside, he says, these guys. BC-level guys with a pube of upside. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's much upside. I think they've probably all plateaued, but they're Dude. all good. Yeah, I, I, I like these signings. Like, I feel like they're all great depth pieces. I, there's your Hill on special teams. I think he's an upgrade over Troy Dye. Uh, Skull 2 I trying to be negative fucking Nancy over there. Nah, I mean, yep. it's, a, it, 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 it's not an opinion. It's a fact, so I, a, I'm not saying he's being negative. Oh, well, he's, if he said, like, we suck because we haven't signed a left guard, he just said still no left guard. It's a little bit. I'm getting Eeyore vibes from it. Still, you are, no you left, are the you are the Eeyore. Still, no left guards. Lovegas is the Eeyore, so he's he's kind I'm of being right here. No, I'm not. Sometimes I'm a realist, but I'm not Eeyore. Uh, so, which one of these players that we added, Jonah Williams, Griffin, Ward, Grigier Hill, which one is the most tantalizing? Which one gets you guys the most excited? There's a difference between getting excited, and which one I think is going to like do the best. 31 likes. Let's go hit that thing. Boom, 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 boom. boom, boom. boom. Oh. We're going for O-line in the draft, says Delton. Why is my junk tingling, Bolster? You probably <laughs> have it on some sort of device, is my guess. That or, or cousin in was a device. earlier. Jack Griffin is, is the early winner here. Jack wants a, a nose tackle. Mm. I would love a nose, nose tackle. Yeah, shit. That'd be beautiful. Pittsburgh is uh, trying to outdo Ashley on these updates here. You guys are going to have to battle has, it out. She has competition. She has, yeah, Griffin's definitely the runaway here. Uh, the most tantalizing? Yeah, I mean, it's Griffin. We, we've been wanting a, a veteran corner this whole time. We wanted Xavier Howard. It didn't happen. Uh, but we got Shaq Griffin, who's, I think, pretty damn close. So I, I love it. I think I think he'd absolutely start. And uh, he's the sexiest one for sure. He is. That's the easy answer. But I'm also going to mention Jihad Ward here. Uh, four sacks a couple years ago, five sacks last year. Having a guy as your third edge rusher who's kind of, you know, he had a couple of good years in a row here, probably two best in a row. Uh, you look at Patrick Jones, who was that third guy before the signing. He had one sack last year for the year before. So I feel that's an upgrade as far as the depth goes. So I, I'm actually intrigued by him, too. Yeah, I mean, it's weird. Uh, again, his PFF score, like even as his pass rusher, is just horrible. But uh, I, I I would say my second one would be actually Grigier Hill. Him and Najee Thompson on special teams are going to eat some ass. They're going to be out there eating ass constantly. Hum, 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 hum. Nobody's getting anywhere on these guys. I'm going to try to play football. You could try. You could try. I don't know if it's going to work, but I, I love that one. I love them all. I love yeah. them all. So let's go. So you know what? We're, we're st- we've still been hot and heavy. I don't know what team has signed the most players, but we got to be damn near at the top, if not at the top. If you count the ones we've re-signed, we've brought in 20, 20 players. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow. Well, do, we, do we have any moves left in the tank? Do, we, do you think the Vikings are done with 35 days confirmed until draft day? Do you think they got another move in them? And if so, what are they doing? Mm. Let's see it in the comments. <laughs> Minnesota Texans. That's actually not a bad, uh, not a bad thing. That might need, maybe it should have some teeth to it. I want to say something, but I'm not gonna. CJ Henderson signing with the Minnesota Texans. Okay, I just got it. Uh, definitely need a run stuffing nose tackle. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's really many of them out there. Yeah, there's not much out there. It's a League lot of assets. Sign one-year deals. Yeah, but uh, the 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 players that are starting in the, in the solid players, I mean, the only one-year deals are just kind of these, like, depth pieces. 
It's not like we went out and signed Blake Cashman to a one year. No, Aaron Jones is one one year, but who? Jones, Aaron Jones. Well, yeah, it's just because he's old as shit for a running back. Mm -hmm. Oh God, Nisper just he's been updating the likes, and I think we actually lost three since he last did it. Oh great, damn it, Travis. Let's just end the show. Lepagus, what do you got? What's our next move? Or maybe we don't have any. I, I do feel like Xavier Howard is going to be part of this team, and I don't know if it'll be before the draft or after the draft, but I feel like that's the next move. I think he's going to come be with his boy, Brian Flores. Uh, so that's the move I think they have left of him. Man, uh, I'd love it. Skull 2A, I think we're going to need visual proof of this. I don't know if I believe that or not. I hope it's true. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, at corner, I mean... Who are they going to get rid of? Besides, I mean, uh, besides your pick. obvious, like <laughs> I don't want I don't want them signing too many. Like Najee Thompson needs to be on this team. Yeah, and I'm when you look at it, it's not like they're going to cut Shaq Griffin. They're not going to get rid of Booth. Uh, I mean, and then are we they? have the two starters. I don't think that's a guarantee. Well, no, but like I don't know. I, I don't think they're going to sign Xavier Howard. I, I think they do have some moves left in them and, and I think they finally maybe start looking at the off offensive side of the ball as far as depth. I don't think they got any sexy moves. I looked up the uh Texans remaining free agents and there's still like <laughs> 15 of them. So uh any, we any definitely got list? a Texan or two left in us. Huh? Any good names on that list? Uh, there's Jerry Hughes, Steve Nelson the corner, Tart the defensive tackle, Kareem Jackson older than shit. We could bring in Q Bear's brother. He's a backup center. If they're on the Texans, good chance they're going to be on the Vikings. That's what we've learned this off season. So uh, you're, you're talking about bringing new guys in, but let me ask you this one, Bar. How about some guys who are on the roster? And let's just look at a position right now. Let's say defensive backs. Is there any players on the roster that we think could potentially help in 2024? No. Or are we giving up on these guys? So anybody in the secondary that we think could possibly step up in 2024? Uh -huh. I'm very curious in the comments on this one. I want to see if there's a single Lewis scene out there. And we'll go, we're going to go, you know, player by player just real quick. Like, do we think they have anything left or not? Um, but yeah, let's see what you guys think first. Oh, Delton Ooh. Vince says Theo. Theo's not even, Theo's already made it. Travis Nitzberg says Evans. I like it. I hope he's right. Delta down. Okay, so like I've seen two Theos now. Like, hey, we got a Lewis scene. We got a Lewis. Sarah says, you know what, Lewis scene is <laughs> an empty look. But don't you feel like uh, Theo Jackson's already got his spots kind of kind of secured as, as this backup safety and, and special teams guy? Like, I, I feel like he's, not really because if, if we didn't have, uh, I mean, he he played well last year. I don't think anybody's got. I feel like if that. we bring in a new safety, then maybe he's in jeopardy. But I feel like he's already proven what he can do. Well, and you and the question was who's going to step up. So I mean. Yep. I mean Continuing I, I to, think he's... To, to grow on that. I don't want, I want Lewis <laughs> or I want him to get better. We got Jay Ward. We got a booth. Travis Nisberg says he's always right. That's the first thing he spelled right. I comments. am always right. <laughs> Jeez, Nisberg. All right, let's do this. Football junk, Junkie says maybe Tonga. Tonga, what, what the hell did he sign? Did he's he a Cardinal. He's, a, he's an Arizona Cardinal. Is that what he is? Uh, Ashley Dick has a great question. Can we get a new member tonight? Yeah, let's get a new member. We get three new members tonight. We're going to give away a hat. Absolutely. So let's start with Lewis Seen. One bar. Let's go through these quick. Lewis Seen, no. I don't I don't see how he really even makes a team. I mean, with Jay Ward, with Theo Jackson, Harrison Smith, Cam Bynum, Metellus technically in that safety mix. Like, I think this is finally the time. Where maybe like he can't he, his issue is he can't doesn't know the playbook. I mean, that's that's. that's sounds I mean, he's is. going in the year what three? He's going year three. Doesn't know tell he's doing. Uh, yeah, it's very. You concerning. would think being injured for most of his rookie year, he would just be like full on. Yeah, All right, I'm injured. At least I'm gonna figure this out. And he didn't. So, yeah, no way in hell. Maybe someone needs to like hey, make flashcards for him. Five, five, Holy shit memberships does that count as giving a doing a giveaway i don't know I it's a gray know. area i, it, I, I feel think like it depends if they if they renew oh they're not gonna but you know what uh tya took to took the initiative out there yeah ashley's saying she cheated <laughs> uh 
yeah, no, nah, we'll we'll do a giveaway. I can't see who he gift gifted them to though. Anyways, yeah, I don't think we have that information. All right, Ashley says to... it does not count. <laughs> Wow. All right. So yeah, Lewis seen everybody. I, I mean, I, the question is, does he make the team? I say no. I don't think so either. Uh, Andrew Booth. I think we all agree that he like the hope is anyways, he's going to step up. Uh, he showed at least a little bit that he's on the field, which is yep. a good step in the right direction. I agree. I, I think uh, Booth does have some upside, does have some hope. There's some hope there. Not a lot, but there's enough to le- at least think he can maybe have a role. In 2024, how about a Caleb Evans? Uh, this guy, he started some games, but man, did he fall off? He was so bad at the end of the year, like to the point. I mean, did he get benched twice last year? Twice, yep. So it was like it was bad, and and he was benched. It's not like we had. I mean, he was benched for rookies. He was benched for it was. Yeah, we got, remember. So we'll count that as two. Bagley, so TYA counts as one. Bagley 24. We get one more member. We will do a hat giveaway. Uh, but uh, yeah, Caleb Evans is just complete. It's like sitting down the toilet after a night of drinking. You don't know if it's going to be a disaster. Or be like, wow, I can't believe that was so nice. Like the night of drinking or the morning after? Morning after. Sorry. Oh, it's going to be a disaster. Guaranteed. Just like a Caleb Evans is probably the same. Yeah, the fact he was benched twice, like even after Flores kind of fed him the first time, said, hey, everybody has their bad weeks. And then he went out and did it again. I mean, uh, he just looked completely lost. I think he was no, he studying didn't. the playbook with Lewisine. Neither one. Caleb what Evans was, was the first year of Quasi's draft, right? So he, yep. he's he's the new regime. Uh, yeah, I don't, I mean, I can't, I can't see him. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Juwan Williams doesn't, I mean, AJ Greens, it's just, who knows? Juwan Williams has been in the league so long. Uh, he, he he did show up for us late in the season last year. I, I hope he, I, I still like him as depth. AJ Green, the third. I don't know. Um, uh, what about Jay Ward? What's your thoughts on Jay Ward? Any potential? Jay Ward J- can't stay Ward. on sides. He gave And their- until he makes a play. That's the only thing I'm going to remember Jay Ward for. So I have no idea, no clue what to expect from him. I hope he's never on a, a, a field goal unit again. I've actually written Jay Ward off from ever having a role in this team. Uh, just I, I don't remember a rookie like coming in and having such a negative impact, like in an easy, like jumping off sides, lining up off sides twice on a field goal. He gave our team six points two times in a year. How does that even happen? Uh, I don't know, Jay Ward. I wasn't excited with the pick when we made it, and I'm even less excited now. Well, it, it was a strange pick when we drafted him because he was a safety. I mean, and when you looked at our roster, it's like it was just weird because he was a fourth rounder. Yeah, I remember right? Remember it was one of those ones where they had like the fan, and he was on some mountain. So, you know, like yeah. I mean, they must like him. Like he's gonna make the team. Um, I, I would I would put that at, at a very high percentage. Like they must really like the dude. Uh and, and unfortunately the only time he was on the field was special teams and he just was wasn't was bad. Very, Horrible. very bad. Maybe he wasn't born to play special teams. I'm not writing Jay Ward off. I am. I am writing him off. How about Najee as a cornerback? What do you think? Najee as a corner. I don't know. Uh, we haven't seen much of it, and we didn't see much of. I mean, I, I just, I, I, I do not know. When he's on the show, he's very confident that he can play the position, and yeah. when he says it, I believe him. Uh, but I think he's got a long way to go, probably there, as far as just proving it. Maybe, maybe he has in practice. I don't know, but I just hope like the plays he's made on special teams kind of like rub off, and like you know, it gives mm. him confidence to like continue to grow as as a player, and then you know, goes to defense and he starts getting better as a cornerback. So I think he, you know, he's made splashy plays. In this league, he knows he can do it. Uh, hopefully, he can start doing that as a cornerback. And I, I, I do, I do believe in Najee, not just because he's a you know a guest over. We got my God, we got another one. Jay go seven, another new member. Jay go, Jay go. Let's go, let's go. All right, now we're doing it. We're giving away a hat for sure. Boom. Before this is over, well done, everybody. Appreciate it. Keep those things coming. Any new member is in the running for a new ball cap. Cheryl's can fill. Yeah, uh, I mean, I feel like Cheryl's was okay as a corner early. Then it really got bad. Like really bad, yeah. So I, I, I believe in Najee, but how about Jay Jay Will, Jalen Williams, our undrafted rookie, got into some playing time last year because how bad a Caleb Evans was. I, I'm willing to. I, I'm going to give him a chance to at least battle for a really low roster spot. 
I mean, oh yeah, no, I, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I think there's, I think there's definitely a chance for him. Football junkie saying uh, Najee misses a bunch of tackles, but when you're that gunner and coming down that fast, the punt returner really doesn't have to do much to just get out of your way. But the 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 thing for me is he's there. I mean, we saw Dan Chasina yeah. for for what was it a year or two. He would always and Chagina is what I call him and, and miss it. Najee made some plays like when you're coming down like that. I mean, I, I give him a little bit of a pass. There's definitely some plays he should have made, but uh, he's just a he's just a and kid. I don't think he missed a buttload. He missed a couple. I don't. I don't. He missed a couple, and, and and he started the season so damn good. We were getting used to it. So then when he missed him, we we're kind of like, oh god. But I mean that like that Packers game, the second Packers game, he was the only fucking Viking even trying, and he actually accounted for our points, forcing. The uh, I got a random one here, just really quick. So yeah. we're talking about guys stepping up. I want to talk about uh, with these free agent signings and potentially with the draft coming up. Who's a guy that you just think is is on the outs that is uh, that is not going to make this team? And there's a super easy one, and I know Lopagus is going to go with that one. But uh, who's a guy on the roster right now? that you think is just going to be gone. Like, all right, you know what? It did not pan out. He should not be on this team. We're moving on. Like the entire offense, defense, any position we want? Any position. I want to I want to name. Hmm. Wangu, Ray Petty. I didn't know why you're going to ask this. Now I have to really think. Oh, there's a there's one that's just so easy. Well, I mean, there's very talking. Jalen Naylor. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's uh, Greg Joseph. I've seen a couple of Greg Joseph. He's he's uh, he's not even on the team, so no one signed him. Bradbury, boy, uh, Dan who's Feeney gonna is going to be playing. <laughs> hey. Yeah, there it is. Seventies, seventies born. Oh uh, yeah, is mine. I don't see any way in hell he makes this team. Well, I, God, I'm we so excited when we drafted him. Yeah, I never really was that excited about it. Yes, oh my God, Jago Seven. Not only does he become. No, I, I didn't really like it. I was never a big ass fan. Farmington Tigers, U12 girls just won their district tournament. Again, you guys have the best Vikes content. Jago, greatly appreciate it, man. I wasn't a fan. We drafted him. I was excited. For I am going to go back to the video no, we made. I was after never that. a fan. I'll yes, tell you what. You were side, nope. to, sideline to sideline linebacker. Fast. After we. Special teamer. After year one, I was excited. I thought he was going to break out and have a huge role in this team. It didn't happen. Uh, that is a great one, Asimov. I But here's my thing. Like, I, I really hope with these guys, and, and they mentioned this in one of the press conferences, is like, you know, they basically said there's a point where you start to need to be contributor. Like, you have to be a contributor. And I, I want to see them be a little more I don't, rough. I don't want to see them try anything. No, I'm saying be rough with these guys they drafted. Like, you know what? You suck. We're going to cut you. Like, you know, be more will. black and white. Don't just keep them there because you used a high pick on them. Uh, drop the axe if they suck. Cut ties now. No more being all nice and shit. I don't. I I think that ship has sailed. I, like, who are they nice with? I mean, they could have. They could have. Was <laughs> seen last year. And there was well, players they I can mean, let go. First rounder. That's a little year two. There's but even a in little year bit three, different there. Like, you need to start maybe saying maybe this guy's not it. You know, you made a mistake. Admit it and just let these guys go. Yeah. No. I. I. I think they will. I don't. I don't think there's an issue there. Like, I don't think they have a problem with it, and I don't think he'll be on the team. And that'll probably be, you know, that's we'll see with the uh, with the Lewis scenes and the Kenny's was Kenny. Was no, Kenny, Kenny was a he was a Spillman pick. Really? Wow. Sticking he was. Around. Yeah, he was sticking around. You guys ready to talk some draft? We got Joe freaking DeLeon ready to come on. Is he and, waiting? Uh, blow our minds with some draft knowledge. So if you guys wow. got any questions, uh, throw them in the comments. Joe D, what's there going he on, is. Buddy? What's up, guys? How you guys doing? Good. Oh, How are you man. doing? Uh, pretty good. It's uh, it feels like the calm before the storm a little bit when we get to the beginning of April. But uh, now I'm juiced up. The Vikings trades got me all excited for what could happen on draft night. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. But is it going to be a good move in your opinion or not? That's the question. That is the well, question. I I mean, at the end of the day, I think that the way that they're able to finesse a second first round pick that's going to help them move up for as little as they had to give up. They didn't have to give up any future first-round capital to do this. That, to me, is ultimately the trigger for this being a good move. If, you, if you're able to accrue the necessary pieces to make the move into the top five without having to give up even more capital, I think that's a really uh, strategic decision by them, the way that they're going about it. So, yeah, I'm already all in on this. I think that this is probably the, 
the best way for the Vikings to go about it and not forcing something by just throwing a bunch of draft capital at a problem and hoping it gets fixed. So, Joe, give us uh, give us a scoop. We know you're on a ton of shows. I mean, you got Hack City. I mean, you got a bunch of them. Believe Network. Give, give us a scoop on on your channels and the shows that you're on. Uh, yeah, you can catch all my uh, stuff on uh, the first team. Hack City is the cut one of the college shows that I do, and then Rafino and Joe is the uh, college football debate show that I do with my co-host uh, Blake Rafino. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like I watch these guys religiously. They do uh, awesome work. It's, uh, <laughs> it, Jody that. is is definitely one of my favorites for sure. Um, I, I, I like Ryan Roberts. Appreciate that. <laughs> I'm not going to tell him you said that, I, and I'm going to remember that. <laughs> uh, so I mean, so he, here's what I want to know. We're going to get into the Drake Mage. I mean, clearly the Vikings are going to go up and get that quarterback, but. If you were the GM of the Vikings right now, and we had you on previously, so I think I know where this might go, but uh, you're the GM and you have these picks and whether that's giving up future draft capital as well, like who is your quarterback? Who are you taking just assuming we're going to get to like three or four? Well, that's where this this conversation I think gets really into the weeds because it, it all depends on where you land. I think if you realistically could end up in that three spot, that is the best opportunity for you. There's connection to Drake May and, and Josh McCown, which, I mean, that seems like a match made in heaven that we already have somebody who's on the Viking staff that has a familiar relationship with Drake May. And I think that Drake May is possibly the highest ceiling quarterback of this class. He's just a little bit of a ways away from getting there. He's such a natural playmaker, and I think that this is a guy who you give him a year or two to develop, especially in an offense that uh, in, a, in a great offensive mind like Kevin O'Connell – it, he is going to take those necessary steps and then eventually develop into somebody who's as good as Justin Herbert, somebody who's as good as CJ Stroud. I see a lot of similarities between him and those guys. If they end up at four, though, and they end up trading with the Arizona Cardinals, they're obviously then placed in this position where um, they're going to be left with whoever is remaining. And more likely than not, from what I've heard, from what I've read, and what everybody's talked about, it's probably going to be J.J. McCarthy if they end up at four. I don't think that many teams are, are rushing to the podium to pick J.J. McCarthy. They acknowledge that he's talented, but I think most understand that he is the fourth best option, especially because he is the least ready to play right now and more likely is going to take a season, if not longer, before he's ready to step in. Now, if I am the Minnesota Vikings, I do feel pretty good about ending up with J.J. McCarthy because of the infrastructure of the roster, uh, I, I really like the front office and the direction of team building that the Vikings have displayed. So I would feel pretty good if I'm JJ McCarthy landing in that position. But more importantly, you're getting a guy who can throw on the run very well. He's very natural, um, you know, release has a very natural release as a thrower. But I just kind of question, I get a little bit concerned about his decision making because at times that has been very inconsistent and he has not been a very natural decision maker when he's been called upon to do so. Uh, just, right. just super quick, uh, we've had a few Caleb Caleb Williams. Just, do you think Caleb Williams is gonna has a better chance to be a bust or a stud? Oh, they're gonna if he was gonna be <laughs> available. At, no, no, at no, no. So if you're the pick, our viewers yeah. are much more knowledgeable than that. Like, it, what yeah, are I the other gonna... bust or stud? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were getting crazy. Uh, no. no, I, I, uh, I think stud. I, I really think that. I understand the concern. For Caleb Williams and why he couldn't work out. It has nothing to do really with his play style. It's just everything to do with off the field and, and who he is in the locker room. But I, I think that there's a lot of positives that I've heard about him that hasn't really been pushed in the media. It's all about the fingernails, the crying on the sideline, the way that he sounded in uh, certain post-game press conferences, the decision to not test for medicals. But he seems to be a good leader that people are going to rally around. So I feel like Caleb Williams, just because of how, again, I think with quarterbacks, we get so focused on who's the big, tall, strong Mm -hmm. athlete. You know, who's the guy that we can mold rather than paying attention to who's the most natural. CJ Stroud was somebody last year that was incredibly natural. And a lot of people, including myself, over evaluated him because at times he was overthinking things he was overcomplicating things and I think that was the case for Caleb Williams this past year where 
he was overcomplicating what needed to be simplified. And it doesn't help that Lincoln Riley was enabling him by just allowing him to freelance too often. So I think you put him in the NFL and he's in a more settled situation in a little bit of time. He is going to turn out to be as good as everybody's projecting. He will be. All right, Joe, I want to ask you about JJ McCarthy. Cause you were, uh, I think it was one of the shows you did early in the draft season back in January. Maybe it was even when you talked to us before, but you were like, this is the guy everybody's going to push up, you know, and over evaluate. Has your opinion changed on him at all? Or are you still sticking to that? I still stick to that original thought, but I, I, I've been a little bit more optimistic. At the end of the day, I acknowledge what J.J. McCarthy is, and I, I stick with where I had my thoughts on him in January, which was this is a guy who is incredibly raw. This is a guy who, like I said earlier, is going to take a year to two years maybe to really get to that point where he's ready to really play. All of the tools are there. That has always been there. And this is somebody I'm I gladly would take in the second round and feel pretty good about it. I understand taking him fourth overall and why you you don't want to miss out on that opportunity to get this toolsy player. It's kind of like, for example, like with Jordan Love, where there were rumors that he could go really early. He ends up going in the end of the first round. The thing with JJ, though, that scares the hell out of me of, of him as a prospect that continuously gets overlooked is just he's got a little bit of Daniel Jones in him where the the right decision doesn't always compute. He oh. is such a big, strong kid, but then you just watch him and you're like, what, why were you making that decision? Why was that the throw that you're making? I keep coming back to, and this is such a random example, but I think an important example is that in the Rose bowl against Alabama on the first drive, all he has to do is throw the ball away. This is a routine procedure for quarterbacks at any level that, when you're, when you're facing pressure, you can't find anyone to, to throw the ball to, throw the ball away. And he managed to almost get intercepted by Caleb Downs. Had his foot not been out of bounds, it no. would have been an inter interception and would have completely derailed any momentum that they could have had in the game. So I, I get worried about just like him making easy things look way too difficult. So you got a round two grade on J.J. McCarthy. Yeah, I, I see him as a – I have a round two grade, but as we understand and we know, just because I've graded him as a second rounder, yep. the NFL is going to be willing to take quarterbacks specifically way earlier than that just so they get the chance to take them. So is 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 it fair to say that the top four quarterbacks, as far as just the the risk level, is J.J. McCarthy the, the riskiest pick out of these guys? Man, that's a – I know that's a common question, but it's a tough one because I'm going to say yes, but at the same time, he is somebody who, if in the right situation and nurtured into the right circumstance, could pan out to be the most steady. Because we saw that at Michigan where he was steady, he did just enough to help keep the, keep the team on, on schedule and, and keep things moving forward and um, to allow the run game to flourish and him just be part of the supporting cast. And I think that that's inevitably what he becomes. I think of, and this isn't a comp, but just like situationally, Ryan Tannehill, when he was at his best with the Tennessee Titans for that short period of time, he was just the additional piece to a really good run game and kept things moving forward. So I think that what's going to benefit him the most, while he might be the riskiest, the riskiest is that, at the same time, he's going to have the advantage of going to probably one of the safer destinations of the other three guys. Let's go. Let's go. Let me ask you this. So uh, a lot of thought is that the Vikings moving to three is going to cost them maybe another first round pick in 2025. Is there that much of a difference between Drake May and JJ McCarthy where it's worth it to invest in another future first rounder to get Drake May instead? Well, I, I will say that I don't think that the price is going to be any different to move to three than it is to move to four. Um, so it all comes down to one, which guy do you like more? But at the end of the day, you have to try and find a way to convince the Patriots that they don't want a quarterback. And today on the first team with, with Ryan, we, we talked about this. We talked about why it doesn't really make a lot of sense for the Patriots to try and take a quarterback this year when the rest of the roster is a mess and they're just going to do the whole Mac Jones thing again where they throw him into a bad team and then things don't work out. If there's a way to convince them, which there's a lot of murmurs that they don't love the idea of picking a quarterback and that they could trade out, I say that you make that move and you go and do that. And I truly believe, uh, as I've kind of highlighted here today, that if you can get up to three, do it because Drake May is, uh, in my eyes, the better prospect. 
Uh, most important question of the day, is that a can of bush beans behind your right shoulder? So uh, I, I'm glad that you noticed. That. I was focused on the Jack Daniels. Over there. <laughs> I got a, I got a follow up to that as well. Yeah. So, okay. So a little context behind this. I, that is a total Easter egg that I put in my backdrop intentionally for anyone that will notice. And it's wow. very rarely noticed. Nobody ever notices it. <laughs> Last year at the Super Bowl, I was there for work because I'm a, a producer and a host with, with Believe. Um, and Hendon Hooker was there promoting Bush's beans. That was wow. what he was there. He was doing media availability. Oh, so I got the opportunity to interview Hendon Hooker and he was carrying around cans of beans and he left it at the table and I took it home with me. And I thought that this is the most random thing. It literally says Hendon on it. So really? I could end up, yeah, I could end up, uh, you know, I have, I have this very random piece of sports memorabilia, God, uh, a, awesome. a can of beans. And just to add to that, the, the randomness of this, when I played uh, football in college, I played at the university of Rhode Island. It was a long snapper. I was a huge fan of I, I I know I had a very big fan club, so <laughs> I'm used to that. But we played against my senior year. We played against Virginia Tech, and Hendon Hooker's very first start was when he was playing at Virginia Tech before he transferred to Tennessee, and that was against the University of Rhode Island. So he he kind of recognized and remembered that game and remembered a bunch of moments. So I thought it was just a, a kind of a random. Uh, random fun thing to have in my backdrop. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, my follow up is when you eat beans in a, do you warm them up or do you eat them cold? I'm not a, I'm not like a bean guy. I'm not gonna, I, I honestly don't. That's not a part of my regular either. time. Crack that thing open, I, man. I, I'm don't worried. Make that them that eat the beans. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. All right. So get, so Vikings, you know, chances are we're, we're packaging those two picks up. We're not going to have another pick until round four. And we still have some pretty good sized needs when it comes to the interior offensive line at guard. And then also we really need a big fat boy to throw in at nose tackle. Uh, round four wise, you got a couple names that, that could be there that we should be looking at. Yeah. I think that uh, Tavondre sweat has been a prospect who has been hyped up a lot throughout this process early on. And I think he's kind of quieted down a little bit. I think that the media's perspective of Tavondre Sweat is not comparable to the NFL's perspective of him because the reality of it is he is a big, strong, physical nose tackle. He is the prototype, and I think he's going to be a really good nose tackle. But because he's limited to only being a, a two-down player, he's not going to be much of a pass rusher, he's probably going to slide to somewhere in the third round, in the fourth round. That is the more realistic destination. So he's the first guy that comes to mind because wow. this is the prototype. This is the, the you know, the big body mauler uh, that you stick in the middle. And then I'm also a fan of uh, Jordan Jefferson who could go later on day three that could be an option for the Vikings who is just a physical freak tested tremendously well. Um, he was uh, uh, infamously the guy who – ripped Christian Haynes's helmet off during senior bowl practices. Uh, I don't think that that's a character concern. If anything, I want a guy who wants to fight yeah. every single play that's playing nose for me. So I like uh, Jordan Jefferson from LSU. He'll eat Ooh. beans right through the can is what he'll do. Yeah. If, if we get sweat in round four, I'm going to show up at your house. I'm going to eat those can of beans <laughs> with my don't ass. It's going to be a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful day. Uh, any, uh, uh, any good guards going to slide around four? pick one Oh eight. Yeah, I, I one guy that immediately comes to mind. I, I think of Bo Limmer from Arkansas. Uh, he's somebody that could go there or on day three. He could play center or guard, depending on what the, the Vikings' future needs end up being. But I, oh. I see a guy that's got some pretty good flexibility. He's got some pretty good power, some pretty good movement skills. And then I'm also a really big fan of Javion Cohen in, in the third round or in the fourth round. Just a stout, mauling type guy. Kind of reminds me of Jonah Jackson, who uh, was recently signed away from the Lions to the Rams. So I uh, have Cohen and Bo Limmer, the two big ones that I've been pushing pretty heavily in this guard class. Nice. All right, one final, final one for you. Uh, you just uh, watching every one of these players inside and out, and then you, you I'm sure you're keeping tabs, not only doing your own mock drafts, but checking out other people's mock drafts. Which player is going a lot higher that makes you cringe? Uh, take J.J. McCarthy out of it, I guess. So... Which, which player is getting overdrafted in mock drafts where you think that maybe the talent isn't worth it or maybe when it comes to draft day, it's just not going to happen? Yeah, the the one that I've seen 
pushed a lot is is Troy Franklin, the Oregon wide receiver. He's somebody who is at times been projected as a late first rounder. That's kind of cooled since his combine performance, but that one was like getting really heavily peddled at one point. But he's still being projected as this early second round pick. And I get what Troy Franklin is. He's a really good linear athlete, and I think that he's a good secondary or tertiary receiving option. But I cringe at this thought that some people think that he's going to develop into an equally productive receiver as he was in college. I get a lot of vibes of Quentin Johnston from TCU, where I kind of wonder if Troy Franklin was in last year's class, if he might have ended up being a first rounder because of how weak the receiver class was. He's just way too thin for me. He doesn't change direction, I think, as uh, aggressively as I would like for a guy that was 170 something pounds at the combine. He's got no play strength. If, if I've got a guy who can't um, at least disrupt and, and break through tackles, I'm not asking him to run people over. But if you go down on first contact, that to me is a little bit of an issue. And if you can't make contested grabs, which he tends to struggle with, that's a bit of an issue for me. So the one that comes to mind is, is definitely Troy Franklin from Oregon. Joe, before we let you go, one last question. Top long snapper this year's draft. Oh, my. I see – I, I should be more prepared for this question. Oh, no. uh, Come on, I'm you are not, a long I guru. <laughs> I usually am prepared for these questions. I'm sorry, I don't think I have an answer because I, I always this always happens in April. So this, the, you guys are the first ones to ask me. I don't have an answer, and then I have to go and do my research and then get ready for the the next one. But I appreciate oh, you. Ryan's top me ten long snappers bit. <laughs> yep, jo- Jody's going to so, be up all damn night researching. F and long snapper just because Lumpagus had to throw that out there. Oh, I just know he was a really <laughs> long snapper. <laughs> well, hey, look, you got it. Someone's got to hold me accountable. That's all. That's all I'll say. I appreciate the ne- you doing the that. next <laughs> Netflix series will be called Long Snapper. No, this is snap. And Jody will be being the doing the uh, the the voice overlay. Ooh. We don't. I'm telling you guys right now. We do not need a long snapper program. I was texting. Uh, my, my girlfriend texted me this after the receiver thing came announced, and I was like, we don't need this because. All it's going to be is three guys that are alcoholics and then one guy who has uh, you know, some sort of like severe learning disability that is overly obsessed God. with watching film of himself. So there's not, <laughs> it's well, not going to be very on interesting. <laughs> I, I just love the fact. So Jody, we're, it's funny. Like we get comments like you look so young and like, you know, you're drafted inside and out like it. it but then you just said a program. So now you're like, in my eyes, 65 <laughs> years old. You just, you just referred to a Netflix series as a program. So you are an old uh, man. I, I'm 25 for anyone who's <laughs> trying to figure that out <laughs> in the Young. comments. I'm, I am not 60. <laughs> um, Jody, you, you, you know, we've said it when we've had you on. You are easily our number one go-to when it comes to anything well, draft. You know your shit. We love it. We love having you on. We're going to keep asking yeah. you until you – Tell us to beat it. So we greatly appreciate back. you coming on on a whim on this live, man. This this was fantastic. Hell yeah. Of course, appreciate you guys as always. And uh, I'm sure that there'll be one or two other times before or after the draft. And it's always great catching up with you guys. Guaranteed. Love it, man. Hell Have yeah, a good Joe. one, Joe. All right, guys. Catch. Thanks, man. So, uh, hey, if you go, go hit up uh, oh, Jody Hack City. Uh, Believe Network. He knows his shit. Every, it, it's just funny when we bring him on. Everyone's just like, man, this guy looks really young, and he's like, yeah. he knows everything. And he, th- they do. They have a great show over there. They do. Uh, I watched him and Ryan Roberts uh, go back oh, and forth. Breaking they news: their top ten rankings. We're gonna have Ryan on as well later this draft season too. So uh, they're fantastic. It's one of my favorite things. So I, I love. Yeah, I'm gonna throw a new bed. their Hack City link out here. So uh, if you're if you're on, go give their ass is a so and, and it's good too because they don't like go by the they're really honest with their takes on these players and these prospects their rankings aren't like everybody else's rankings i mean it's it, it's quite a bit different yeah and they 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 have uh they have fun on there too they're not afraid to they're not afraid to get a little, yeah, they got a little bit of uh a bit of dirtiness to them a little dirtiness so uh jody greatly appreciate go mm-hmm. over there give their asses a sub uh but let's uh let's let's talk some draft uh i think it is draft time yeah, so it's not even on our on our thing, but I saw. So Alec Lewis was saying um, that came out after we put this together was that to get to pick three, they would not only have to give up a twenty twenty five first rounder, but also a twenty twenty six second rounder. We won't have a second round pick until what twenty twenty seven. Yeah, and you know what? It's probably not far off, but 
they get their quarterback. <laughs> they <laughs> might get the, the front office might not be here when that 2026 draft rolls around. Yeah, never know. I mean, uh, what yeah, think? what do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of that trade in the comments here? I'll be back in two shakes of a lambsdale. Yeah, I mean, uh, that that's uh, that's pretty damn steep. The the, the 2025 first rounder is like kind of like, all right, I guess it makes sense. But shit, that extra second rounder just like kind of a, a dagger seemed, right up seemed, my butthole. That seemed a lot. Like, I don't know. I think the first rounder is plenty. I, I don't know why you'd need to. I mean, it, here's the thing like, that pick 23 is much, it's more valuable than the first rounder in 25. In 25. So to throw in more on top of that, I, I, I get it. It's going to cost you another first round pick. You get to the top three. I, I think that second rounder that just seemed a little excessive to me. It really did. Um, but Joe was just on. I mean, he seems to think Drake May is a better prospect than JJ McCarthy. If they're really that hard up for him, I mean, I'm not saying they wouldn't do it. Um, I mean, you'd still have a first round pick. So that would be really nice. Uh 1123 original Viking Gansta says that's enough. That's enough. I ain't giving up anything more than me. Yeah, I don't know. That second order to me was a little too much, a little too steep. Uh that was that was too much. Uh Dalton Vincent says they can fuck off. They can fuck off. Um, so yeah, to me, that was a little high, a little rich, a little bit rich, but again. Here's the thing that I always come back to when I think the, the conversation is too much. is like I fast forward to like November 1st next year and you see this rookie quarterback ripping it up. And like, oh, my God, we could have had this guy, but we you know didn't want to give up an extra second round pick. So that's what I always come back to when I, when I think about compensation. I sort of have issues now. Uh, it's just when you actually get the season going and you think of what you could have had if you were just a little more aggressive. Oh my God. Chris Bowman thinks you maybe sit down and go pee pee. I have uh, late at night. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Get tired. Couldn't stand anymore. Oh, fuck. Couldn't do it. Are we still talking about the second round pick? I think we just wrapped it up. All right. So uh, Cardinals made it very clear today that they are listening to offers. I think they even said they like, basically have an open sign. He which, didn't want a flashing uh, though. Flashing gives him. Uh, he didn't like the flashing sign. So what? What's the deal? Like. Why don't they want Marvin Harrison Jr.? That's my question. Is, yeah. uh, who cares if he's not working out? Like, like uh, I, I'm very confused about that because if they trade back with us, they're not getting any receiver. They must want yeah. to tackle. Well, I know I talked to Professor Joe, too. He was like, if Marvin Harrison Jr. is there, we're not trading. He's like, we're getting that guy, which after last year moving down, passing on some top-end talent early in the draft, you think they wouldn't do that again? I don't know. If I'm the Cardinals, I'm taking Marvin, Har Marvin Harrison Jr., and I'm not going to – I need that elite playmaker – uh, rare talent at wide receiver position. So I'm not going to move. So the fact that Asafor is coming out there, but you got to remember where his background is. His background is from Bill Belichick, Patriots era, where they were always trading down. So is that just instilled in him, the belief to move down and get more players better than one elite player? If I'm the Cardinals, I'm, I'm wanting the trade. I know I know this year's picks are worth more, but I want to trade with the Giants and still get like neighbors. I mean, they're yeah. only trading back to six. Giants gets their quarterback. So uh, that does concern me. At this point, as far as uh, we could just get absolutely screwed. Um, what just happened? Did you just get some kind of delivery? It's on your damn business. <laughs> Is that that obvious? Yeah, you're just like, oh. So, yeah, that uh, Cardinals, they're going to trade out. It's going to happen. Is it with the Vikings? Is it with the Giants? Is it with some other random team? Uh, but somebody is going to get up there, and the Giants are a team to watch. That's well, scary. I mean, Skull 2, I, I, I mentioned. If they can. Skull 2, yeah. what, what receiver are they going to get at 11? Well, here's the thing. You got the Giants could take a receiver. The Bears could take a receiver. So then you're sitting there at pick 11. You're going to get the fourth option. And who is that? Is it is it Brian Thomas? Is it uh, Andy guy. Mitchell? I mean, who I mean, is it going to be? And is he worth the 11th pick? If, you put I, if Brian I'm the Cardinals, Thomas I'm probably going to go with the pass rusher or a corner. You can get the first corner back there. Why would you not go that route? Yeah, so the, the thing is, the biggest takeaway is Cardinals are willing to wheel and deal. and uh, I. But I'm agree with you. I, that makes me nervous, too, because the, the Giants are sitting at six. There's reason rumbling, so they like McCarthy. Oh, yeah, absolutely, Ellis Gregor. I think they will take a receiver. They might have to. They, they gave away everybody else. They don't have anybody. Uh, Brian one. Thomas, he's a name. Like, for us... Receivers, I don't start looking at them until like the round, the mid rounds, because it's not a huge need. So like even I haven't, I haven't dove too much. I mean, obviously the big boys up top, but like those second round guys, like I know nothing about any of oh, those. Brian receivers. Thomas is good. But Levin oh is no, I, he's good. Like you see him ranked ahead of like you can see him. You see Chris Sims 
I mean, he has the stupidest rankings ever. Yeah, I think he Brian Harrison Thomas or... like two or something. Yeah, I think Chargers also really want to trade down. Like, they could is that get... true? Is this we got an OJ Simpson? Yeah, no, it was going on earlier today. He says it's going on right now. Well, it's been a long chase because this was reported at like three o'clock today too. And That's we could have had Cam Sim. We wanted him. We did. Uh, he didn't have a good year, and now he's just turns out he's just we it's... dodged a bullet, and he's probably dodging bullets right now. That's that's bad news. Bad news. So uh, let's talk. So the tight the Texans supposedly initiated the trade talks with the Vikings. Um, thoughts. I mean, does that mean like basically the Texans? I mean, Texans just call us up and said, "Hey, here's some picks," and we're just like, "All right, we'll just take it and see what happens." Yeah. Does this give maybe a little bit more, more merit? Oh, we we, we love Sutton last year. I won't um, disagree. Does this mean maybe the Vikings actually are willing to stick and pick? With those picks, meaning like they weren't actually the ones initiating this mastermind of a deal. Suspense is killing me. So quiet. We're waiting for comments, and it just we all just both stop talking. I I like it. I like it. I I like the fact that they're doing it. I like the fact that they're just giving themselves options. And when you really look at it, I mean, I know we're all on board with this is going to happen. This is just like we're we're doing this to get a quarterback. But what's the worst case scenario? We get two first rounders. Oh, wham! Boo hoo! I mean, it, it's still a win win, and we just we don't we just don't have a second round pick for a while. So who? This this is beautiful. I love what they're doing. If the, if they already had a deal in place, they would have made it by now. You're pretty much seeing all the people out there smart, a lot smarter than us, saying that if a trade happens, it's going to be on draft day. So they're just going to wait and see how things shake out. And worst case is they get two damn good players. Yeah, I just think it, it gives a little bit more like maybe the Vikings are actually willing to stay and watch the board develop and wait and then, you know, let McCarthy fall with them. You want to me develop? No, I have been for many years. And you finally hit it about 26. You finally developed into a man. Late bloom. Oh, my God, the drifter. I thought that said Trent Dilfer. <laughs> <laughs> my God, it's been shocking if Trent Dilfer was on our show. The drifter, uh, what about taking the best two position players in 2024 and tank for quarterback next year? I, I mean, who's there? I mean... Shadur, it's going to be oh, there's the, some good the Georgia kid, and there's Quinn Ewers. Um, there's good quarterbacks every year. They always emerge. Uh, I don't know. I just think it gets a little bit more like for the, the crowd that's saying, hey, we're going to stick and pick 11-23. I think it gets a little bit more percent chance of that actually happening. The fact that if they really didn't initiate this trade, like maybe the Vikings aren't super high on McCarthy. I don't know. I think they are. I still think they're going to trade up and, and move. But um, I don't know. I think it gets a little bit more merit to that. I really do. Yeah, no, uh, I don't think they really know what they're going to do. I think they've talked to the teams and given them some scenarios of what they will give if somebody is there and somebody is not. And I think draft day, we're just all going to be shitting our pants. That's why you got to make sure to get your butts on the live. I'm going to be streaming that whole first round. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be nerve wracking. It's going to be scary. I might not have a shirt on. My milkers are going to be out. You don't even have milk. You have tiny little nipples. Thank you. Uh, And and your chest hair grows in the Batman logo. It does. And what about Bob? You're right. I mean, everybody's assuming this, but like, what if something absolutely just batshit? What if the Giants, being the Giants, trade up to two and, well, I'm not going to trade the Washington, whatever. What if something just absolutely crazy happens? Yeah. And it could. Joe Alt all of a sudden goes two to Washington. It's not out of the realm of possibility. And let's just say that does happen. Like, how deflating would that be? The Vikings have these extra picks. We're all, you know, for a month gearing up for a trade up and it just doesn't happen. It just, I mean, I mean, what a buzzkill would that be? I got a, I got an opposite take on that one. Ray Brock says, of course, tanking is smart, but why owners don't want that? Yeah, I mean, as far as deflating, if we don't make a move, I, I don't see that at all. Like, they're gonna be, they're gonna be making the phone calls. Like, I, I, I look at it as the angle is like, the team wanted too much for us to get up there, or just the guy wasn't there. It's one of the two because they're clearly all in on going and getting a quarterback. So if it doesn't happen, it was just obvious to be like, fuck, we're not giving you that. Goodbye. We'll stick in a But like just a, a full month of anticipation, two months really of anticipation, speculation that we're going to get our, we're going to do something different, move up in the top five, get our quarterback. And then it just psh, nothing. I mean, you yeah, won't be let down I, at all. I, I would not be upset one damn bit if we end up with two first round picks. I don't think it's going to happen. But if for some reason shit just goes sideways, I I am just fine with that. That's oh and then God, I'm gonna be news. even more shit faced because I'll be on the whole damn time. 
Jack Breen says he will be the quarterback for the Vikings in 2024. Jack Breen. He sounds like a quarterback. Yeah, not a very good one, though. Oh, that's not nice. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's talk draft crushes. Yeah. Draft crushes uh, of the week, Lopagus. Who is your draft crush? And if anybody yeah. in the comments has a draft crush, we'd love to see it. I love. Absolutely. I mean, when I when I think draft crushers, I still think like sleeper guys, but that's well, not the definition it, of a draft crush. Well, the whole point of this is just to get maybe some new names out there, some more names to look at. Uh, I've looked at guys. You guys have mentioned the comments. One I know you have. Guys. I'll take a look at guys that you mentioned. And I already mentioned this guy in a, a video earlier this week, but my my draft crush of this week is defensive tackle Keith Randolph Jr. Like from him. Illinois. Six three and a half, two hundred ninety six pounds. He's played inside. Mm-hmm. He's played outside. Mm. Uh, I think he had like I had to stats up. I think I just lost him, but he had four or five sacks the last couple of years. Uh, what I love about this guy too, he plays with fire. Like every single time he makes a play, he just out there. He's like pounding his chest, getting everybody hyped up. He's just kind of crazy that way. Uh, he seems to be like a pretty late day three kind of a pick, but I think he's got something to him. Uh, and. I'm actually pretty excited about Keith Randolph Jr. The name doesn't get you fired up, but uh, this this versatility, what he can do, it can create some pass rush. He can stuff the run. Uh, I, I like him. I'm pretty excited about him. Yeah, he's uh, he's always kind of that guy I just take uh, in the mid rounds from from Illinois. So uh, yeah, I, I I enjoy him quite a bit. We're, we're seeing a lot of draft crushes in the comments as well. Hunter Norzad, everybody loves. I think it's yeah. mostly because of his name, but. Um, Isaac, Isaac Christian Boyd, uh, Northern yeah. Illinois. Is that... There's yeah, there's a lot of teams. No, he just, yeah, no, he's Northern Illinois. You're right. I don't think he is. I think it's uh, no, he is Illinois. All right. Yeah, he's the guy that the uh, yeah, I, I like him. Can't Mine. Look. I'm going. I'm going goofy this week. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going with Cam Little. I'm going with the kicker yeah. from Arkansas. Uh, if we were to take a kick, Northern route, Iowa, Northern Iowa. Yeah, I knew it was something different. Uh, I just remember the the UN. Uh, there we go. So, uh, yeah, Cam Little, the Arkansas kicker. He's only 20 years old. If we were to draft a kicker, he's he is definitely the one I want. This dude, in his college career, never missed an extra point. He's like 130 for 130 or something. Got a big-ass leg. When he, when he plays his first NFL game, he's going to be just turning 21. Mm. Like, he's a young buck. Like, that's the young point where, like, if you miss a field goal, he doesn't even care. He's still hung over from the day before. He, he's partying know. with his boys. He, he, he's got he's got ice in his piss. He does not give two shits. And it, 56 yarder, I think it was as long. Uh, and even going back to high school, the dude does not miss extra points. He's he, he's my top kicker. And I at this point, looking at who we have at kicker, they would have addressed it in free agency already. John Parker Romo. They did. We might actually draft a kicker. And if it is, I want Cam Little. Yeah, I read something too, like where uh, like the the sound of the ball sounded different off his foot than everybody else. I read that Boom. and that's, you know, that's nice Boom. too. So I've, I've been taking cam little a lot in mock drafts that I've been doing over Will Reichard, who we both were in love with for a long time, but I agree. Cam little is my horse at kicker as well. Yeah. Just a wee young lad, but he's got the, he's got the leg. And what a, a perfect year to mule. break in a kicker. Like we're not going to really, I mean, we're going to, I think we'll be in the mix, but really if we make the playoffs, it'll be a surprise. I'm, I'm going to say it right now. I think no one else could argue that. LS um, throwing out some more NDS. You guys, of course uh, absolutely. I love it. Uh, just remember, uh, so draft is coming up. We're going to start pushing the fact that every year we do, a, we do a show where you guys send in your videos of you predicting who the Vikings take, and then we do a vote to see who had the best video. Viking Funeral is the reigning champ. So he, he is Green. the man, the Jack big Jack. Green. Greatly appreciated, sir. Greatly appreciated. So you predict who the Vikings take. Uh, it could be a trade-up. It could be two picks, whatever you want. You get as creative as you want. You send it to us. We do a whole show, and we put it out there. It's, it's fantastic. So, it's like a – it's become a draft day tradition, really. It has. It has. Uh, also, don't forget to vote on our page, uh, on our community page on YouTube for uh, – we're doing a bracket. Pick 108. Who is it going to be? Uh, we put some options up there. So it's an eight-man bracket. Uh, we're going to close that voting tonight. We'll – drop round two tomorrow morning uh so don't forget to vote for that as well do it do it do it do it All i right. watched mason mccormick last i wasn't overly impressed with him i'm not impressed with anything he's fantastic no, I, 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 I didn't see him like he's quick he gets to second level in a hurry he wasn't like he, i want to see my guards knock some guys on their ass i didn't see that from mason McCormick. that's what mason mccormick does i didn't see him knock a single guy on his ass what what did you and this what, was his highlight what, tape 
Like, I mean, I like the way spend he gets more, up. He spend gets more than level. five minutes watching a YouTube video. I didn't see him fucking knock anybody down. So that was a little bit concerning to me. The way he tested at the combine was insane. Uh, I, I No, think he he's a great good. athlete. I love his second level. I think he'd be a good pass protector. But I want to see my guard. Like, I, I went back and watched uh, Van Pran and, and Powers John. And he was, they were just depleting dudes. Well, let's play a little game here. Who would you do? do? All right, so uh, let's hold on, hold on, hold on. Who would you do? All right, so this the what I did was uh, I'm trying to fill some needs at some positions that still need filling, whether that's the draft or free agency. So I went with mm. guard, wide receiver, and defensive line. Ooh. So I want to know who would you do? And usually we do uh, usually we do some ladies' names. I went I went dudes this week. I got dudes. Right. You can so do dudes. Number one. We got Bernard. Bernard. Bernie. What do you think of Bernie? Oh, Lubbock is leaving. I can see him down there. So this is option one. We get Zach Zinter taking a flyer. Probably, you know, you figure in the fourth to fifth round uh, type of guy. We get Washington, the wide receiver from USC. And then Tart, of course, a Houston Texan. So this is Bernard. Some say Bernard. I've never heard anybody say Bernard. You watch Love Actually? Yeah. Call him times. Bernard. All right. Option two. We have Hank. Mm. We got Hank. <laughs> Cooper BB, guard from Kansas State. And you got Hunter Renfro, who's still hanging around in free agency. Michael okay. Hall Jr. Uh, had a hell of a pro day today. Really blew everybody off the chart. Uh, he's a guy who I think might go a lot earlier than people think. Yeah, everybody's saying this dude's going to go earlier than you think so uh so we got bernard and hank bernard and hank what do we get what are we thinking what are we thinking i don't know i think you're gonna go with a uh maybe a nice thomas no vincent edgar creepy carl <laughs> yeah, creepy carl as a third option they bring dalton reisner back get brennan rice and then marlon davidson uh who is just a quasi type signing to a t uh, by the way, Creepy Carl comes from a one bar when he put these yellow shaded sunglasses on. Wasted. Uh, Hank. It seems like Hank might be the pick. So comments. Uh, who, who'd you do? Who'd you do? Uh, there's a lot of people say, ba not wanting to comment because it's male names, but like, Come just on. who'd you pick? Pretend you're a girl. <laughs> Hammer and Hank all day. Hank is just, ooh, there's a Bernie. I like all these options. Creepy honest, Carl yeah. all the way. There we go. There we go. I'm surprised Marlon mm -hmm. Davidson is still hanging around out there. I'm not. He's not it good. Seems like a very uh, quasi signing. Yeah, but he's he's had a rough go at her. Spanky Hanky. I'd do Hank. All right, Hank. Hank is really winning. <laughs> and I, you know what? I, I I had a feeling it might be Hank. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty good. It's well, because really who are you taking? <sighs> uh, yeah. You know, I'd love to be different, but I'm going to go Hank too. I love Cooper BB. Hunter Renfro, I, I think, is very mm -hmm. still very underrated. And then Michael Hall Jr. Man, we got him in round four. I would shit my fucking pants. Yeah. I got to say, like, and there's not been many, but Bernard is actually fairly tempting no, I with like the Zach Zinter. Like, Zach mm -hmm. Zinter could be a guard. He might not be a guard this year, but he could be the guy for the next five to seven years. And did you purposely put Taj and Brandon Rice being from the same school? Because, I mean, there was a report that a lot of USC players like Taj more than Brandon Rice. Uh, just they're, they're pretty much kind of in the same draft hemisphere yeah. as far as where they get drafted. Um, but Brennan Rice, I'm, Creepy Carl is not getting any love. Uh, and I thought Dalton Reiser would have tugged on some people's yep. heartstrings. Yep. No, you did well. He did well. I, I, I would I would take – the only reason I'm not taking Bernard is Tart is very short-term. Washington doesn't get me too excited. So, yeah, it's, it's Hank. Hank, the all right, let's play a little uh, percent chance. I'm going to give you some... Hey, we did uh, it. We got to 100. Well done. We did it. We did it. Uh, let's play percent chance. I'm going to give you some Vikings draft uh, free agency scenarios. You tell me the percent chance they happen. Are you ready? I got uh, Yes, but I'm going to be kind of multitasking because I got to get the members. We, we did get the members. Oh, you want to do that first? To give away a hat. So, yeah, if you got something to talk about quick. Do I'd it. prefer your full attention for this next yeah, segment. No. That's true. If you, if you guys haven't, go hit up Joe D. Leone. Give him a sub at Hack City. Absolutely. They're great. 
uh, it's really truly become something I, I look forward to. I, the only thing I don't like about Joe, he puts his like they'll do a video and then he'll put he'll put on Twitter like his rankings. It's like don't spoil it for me, man. You don't, don't care. It. He's getting paid those big dollars, baby. You he don't, don't care give a what shit. He doesn't care where you're watching it at. He doesn't. He doesn't. Uh, all right, so let's um, let's go back to this uh, draft and Monty going out there and selling the fourth overall pick. Uh, I don't know if we talked about it enough, but do you guys think this is going to happen before the draft or not? I want to see what you guys think. Do you think the Vikings just going to go ahead and move up and get that fourth pick, secure it? Uh, maybe Drake May falls. Maybe he doesn't. But uh, what do you guys think? Keep talking. Oh, I see you. Randy Lewis is talking about MHJ liking post, but the Chargers haven't picked five. Maybe Marvin Harrison Jr. wants to be a Charger? Who the hell wants to be a Charger? I don't know. Sullivan would get the move up right now. Johnson does not want to hope move up yet. Uh, FT Maddie Man says it will be a draft day decision. Do you guys also think uh, going with this? Do you think the Patriots like maybe won't take a quarterback, or are you guys all said that he's going to that they're going to go ahead and pull the trigger on a quarterback? Take him. Right, says, it's still too early to tell. Too early to tell. Right. Down Ray Brock says, "Why risk it? We have to move up." Risk it for the biscuit. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, we have uh, six nominees. Really? We got six new members tonight? Or is that oh, just uh, with... TYA uh, was giving those things out like... Hand jobs in a circus. Never been to one of those circuses. It's called the Shrine Circus. Oh, I have been to that. All right, here we go. So the winner gets a one barn lumpicus hat or a shirt, whatever you want. Uh, you got to email us one barn lumpicus at gmail. Here we go. Oh my god, I'm so I'm so nervous. And the winner is oh, I think it's Sarah. Sarah takes her home. Takes her home. Sarah, email us one bar lumpicus at gmail.com. Uh, and let us know if you want a shirt or a really nice ball cap. Hell, well done. Well done. Yes. Appreciate everybody uh, who, who subbed and, and school to a as always. Ashley, zip it. All right, Lubbock, what was the percent chance? What the percent chance of what this is going to happen with the Vikings? Some are draft related, some are free agency related. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, percent chance the Vikings draft Drake May. Are we waiting uh, some, for some comments? Yes, Sarah, you won. Sir, you won. Yeah, we can wait for the comments. Lucky duck. All right, guys. Percent chance you think Vikings draft? We've got twenty, couple twenty fives right off the bat. Ooh, what? what yeah. Someone, someone put through a percentage today that they thought it was what thirty percent chance that the Vikings actually trade up into the top three. 50, oh. 86, I love twenty T bass. Hmm. Ooh, Delton says five percent. Five percent, Drake man. I'm gonna put this. Uh, I'll put it at 25. percent I, I yeah. really like if it was if this was JJ McCarthy, it would be at about 65. Mm. But Drake May compensation just might be too tough, and and the Patriots just might want him. Let's not forget. I mean, Drake May, his old line was shit last year. His receivers were bad. That uh, guy he was overcoming a lot of things uh, in his last year at UNC. All right, percent chance the Vikings draft JJ McCarthy. You just answered it. <laughs> What did I say? 65? You went with 65. What everybody else in the comments think? Uh, percent chance of Vikings draft J.J. McCarthy. Have you already ordered the jersey? Yeah, I think I think that I think that number but four. What about Bob says 100 percent? Uh T Bess is 75. I think Viking Funeral 50%. 60. These are much higher. Kevin Kundert says 75%. Just real quick on the J.J. McCarthy, and I think I've said this multiple times. Yeah. Drake May, everybody. So when it comes to Drake May, they're like, oh, Mitch Trubisky, you know, the UNC, he's got, you know, he's going to be a bust. Uh, uh, J.J. McCarthy, whatever. It's like we can say whatever we want and get super mad about it. See what they do. First round quarterbacks. Nobody has an effing clue. So you can get as pissy as you want about it. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, what do you go? What do you go? 10 or 11? Maybe even 12. And even when he went there, when they traded up to get him, everyone's like, oh my God. Can't play. Like, let's just let it play out. There's no point of getting upset 
about well, a player in the draft that has yet to even take a snap. The one thing that I think is really true, and I've seen in multiple places uh, saying, is like, what better place for a rookie quarterback to land than the Minnesota Vikings? Kevin yeah, no O'Connell, shit. these receivers, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson, Aaron Jones at running back, a line that's pretty well set. Yeah, you have some interior issues, but really two bookend tackles. You got your left and your right tackle set. I mean, this is a rare situation for a rookie quarterback to come into. It's ideal, and yeah, it would be a dream for any of those guys to be drafted by the Vikings. Yes, Alyssa's in the house. Always good to see Alyssa. Dan Hennerman says 69%. I think that's strategic. Uh, Skull TOA has a very good point. Never draft the helmet, draft the player. And that, and that was one of the big things with, with Mahomes. I mean, how many guys at Texas Tech like set records? Yeah. For, for touchdown passes year in and year out, and they come to the NFL and they do nothing. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's a crapshoot. Uh, but, all right, what, what do we got next? I got a few more. I got a few more. Uh, percent chance the Vikings don't trade up in the draft. Stick and pick. Let's see what you guys think before a one bar busts his load. Well, let's see. You're going to make Lepagus blush. Just kidding. I think he might be whiter than me. That's a really I look really uh, white tonight. You always do. And I'm I'm like the I'm like see-through. So is my forehead getting bigger? Uh eh, both of ours are. Uh Dennis says zero percent. We trade up. Mon, I mean, I, is this the is the question if no, we, we trade don't up? we do not trade up? Oh, we don't. All right. Zero okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, a lot he's, of uh under very low percents. I, I think I think those are fair. I I would say I'm gonna say 18%. Yeah, 18, huh? Good year. God, that was a fun year, Stargate. Man. 2018, you're at Stargate? No, just being 18 years old. Oh, 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 oh. I think I had two kids by then. 75% chance they don't trade up. Let pull up as a five head. <laughs> no kick. That was rude. Who wrote that? You started it. Who cares? 10%. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> on board. They're they're gonna oh, trade up. Great. Yeah, he's right. All right, Vikings, uh, percent chance Vikings sign Xavier Howard. Wow, well, your, your percentage is very hard. Oh, God. Were you, Melissa, I don't know how old you are, but maybe we shared a dance. You probably did. <laughs> Hope she stayed away from that Ruber character. <laughs> Diaper night at Stargate. Oh, we got some Stargate goers here. I love it. <laughs> Every Wednesday, man. Woo, just out in the car, just whapping those Milwaukee best lights. Ah! Well, you... Holy, how much money? So good. Mitch Mitchell was probably your buyer. I bet Alyssa was the one up in the cage. Yeah, definitely. She was in the cage. <laughs> 100%, 11, 10. I, I think the Xavier Howard, I, I think that I think that ship has sailed. I, I put it at like 2% chance. I, I don't know why they would bring him in at this point. If they're going to bring him in, they want to brought in Shaq Griffin. Like, I think actually they're going to sign him. Tell me why I'm wrong. Gonna, I think he's going to be the June signing. Like I think they're going to just wa- let the draft play out. They get some some guys fall in their laps. Great. If not, I think they're going to go ahead and, and sign Xavier and Howard. So, but you got to look at from Xavier and Howard's standpoint. Like, doesn't he want to go somewhere where he's going to play? What is he like? Thirty five. I mean, he doesn't no, have to he's push twenty nine or thirty. I think he wants so to be I, with Brian I, Flores. I, I think I see Xavier I and Howard, Howard signing with a really bad team. Just to get some playing time, like he still got a little juice in the tank. Uh, absolutely, remember the photographer guy. Uh, there was there was a he wasn't the only creepy guy there. A lot of creepy guys there. Yeah, like uh, so yeah, I, I got Howard at like the floor. No, I actually uh, I would go higher. I just think I, I think it's the perfect June signing. I think he'll wait. I don't think there's any rush there. All right, you ready? Next one. I got two more. Percent chance Dalton Reisner returns to the Vikings. Zero. Wow, zero. What happened? They wow. won't they won't have signed Blake Brandle to that contract if Dalton Reisner is coming back. I'm sorry. Like one zero. zero. What do you guys think? I wish it 5%. I wish it was higher, but it, it's twenty. Yeah, we got we got some. This is not going to play the percentage here. game. She's just going to say he's not coming back. Minus 15. Minus 15? Yeah, these, yeah, they're, they're on. I mean, if, if Blake Brandle wasn't here, I'd, I'd put it higher. Yeah, I agree. It's it's very, very low. I wouldn't put it at zero, but I think it's in every zero. day that passes, it gets lower and lower and lower. Yeah. T-Bass, the highest one, 50. 
percent. You'd be here by now. They would they would have already locked it down. I think the T bass would be here. I was there to check my door. I'm the nervous. only way he comes back is what he do, what happens last year. For some reason, Dalton Reisner goes into the season, does not get signed. And us as the Vikings needed somebody, and and maybe Blake Brandle gets hurt. You, we've mm-hmm. seen our backups at the position, uh, or Brandle just sucks, and they'd have to get somebody. I just it, he'd have to be an in season signing. What's up, uh, Reinhold Reingold Beer since nineteen fifty six? I'm intrigued. Mark, I think he might be a distributor. <laughs> I think he's trying to push Do they make his a product light? on our show. Uh, all right, I got one more for you, one more. Are you ready for the last one? All right. Percent chance we hit 12K viewer or subscribers by draft day. Percent oh. chance we hit 12K by draft day. That's a good one. We're at, uh, let me, let me, let me get the count here. I'm sure we got a ton after, after I got to say, you know, over the last couple of weeks, greatly appreciate everybody coming yeah. in, subbing. I mean, we've made a, we've made a hell of a push. Mm-hmm. We've made a hell of a push and it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. These are very We're high at right 11. Now. 11,430. Mm. So I did the math today and I sent it to Lupagus. I think we need 17 subscribers a day. Yeah. Everybody's very confident. <laughs> Tracer, very... Says, Tracer uh. says 12%. Ashley's being realistic, 75. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Alyssa, 1,000. Bob, I don't know what that number is. I'm going to put it at, I'm going to I'm gonna go 50 50 on this one. Because, yeah. you know, free agency is starting to die down a little bit. Uh, you know, draft will start to pick up a little bit, uh, but it's going to be close. I think it might actually happen on draft night while I'm on here. Wow. Shit faced. Wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think it, I think it happens. I, I think it's going to happen. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say 88% like this one program. When he said program, I almost just <laughs> laughed my shit. What, what do you say? 48? 88. 88. Woo. I mean, one more, like a, a high, like, Xavier Howard signed me for an only draft. I think that would might be enough to push us over. John says zero. Okay, thanks, John. Well, sure to be clear, I ain't I ain't giving John any shit. He looks like he could absolutely rip my head off. I, no problem. I'm gonna give John a ton of shit. No, I think that might be Endo. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, you know what? I we appreciate everybody who's very confident that it's gonna happen. I hope it happens. 12k by draft day. We still got to think of a, a fantastic giveaway for that 12k, and we're gonna do something. Um, I haven't thought about it yet. Like we're gonna do it. Like we're gonna. Like together, we're gonna do something. No, so we're gonna do a giveaway. Yeah, these we're gonna do some. I was really Ish. nervous. All right, well, that <laughs> is horned up. I'm sure we'll be going live before. I don't know. I'm sure some sort of impromptu. We've been doing them a lot lately. We appreciate everybody hopping on. Absolutely. Appreciate all the love. Go hit up Joe DeLeon at Hack City. Give him a sub. Uh, Alyssa, uh, before I mean, are you doing your therapy session tomorrow, six thirty? I was assume she would be. We need confirmation. She's a heart and a purple heart. Hash brown, A minus, freshly autographed by one bar. He Let's wants see. it. He wants oh, your fucking. She thinks so. She, she thinks, thinks so. so. What's Hit it her up aside. on Twitter. Hit her up on Twitter. You'll find Can her. you please send Mark Johnson your fucking A minus? Confirm. I threw it away. It's gone. What? Why would you? That was fucking perfect. You should Appreciate have everybody hopping on. Hit that like, that. hit that sub. Let's get 12,000 subs. All right, guys. Remember this, too. The, the first porno ever made was back in 1896. It was called La Couche de la Marais, which means sleeping time. For the Can you imagine the bush in that thing? Huge. <laughs>